section 138. Vaisampayana continued, when the spectators with eyes expanded with wonder made way for that subjugator of hostile cities, Karana, that hero with his natural male and face brightened with earrings, took up his bow and girded on his sword, and then entered the spacious lease like a walking cliff, that far-famed destroyer of hostile hosts, the large-haired Karana was born of Pritha in her maidenhood. He was a portion of the hot beamed sun and his energy and prowess were like on to those of the lion or the bull or the leader of a herd of elephants. In splendor he resembled the sun, in loveliness the moon and in energy the fire. Begotten by the sun himself, he was tall in stature like a golden palm tree and endued with the vigor of youth, he was capable of slaying a lion. Handsome in features, he was possessed of countless accomplishments, a mighty armed warrior, eyeing all around the arena, bowed indifferently to Drona and Kripa, and the entire assembly motionless with steadfast gaze thought, who is he? And they became agitated in their curiosity to know the warrior, and that foremost of eloquent men, the offspring of the sun, in a voice deep as that of the clouds, addressed his unknown brother, the son of the subduer of the Asura, Paka Hindra, saying, O Partha, I shall perform feats before this gazing multitude, excelling all thou hast performed, beholding them, thou shalt be amazed. And O thou, best of those blessed with speech, he had hardly had done when the spectators stood up all at once, uplifted by some instrument as it were. And O tiger among men, Duryodhana was filled with delight, while Vibhatsu was instantly all abashment and anger. Then, with the permission of Dhona, the mighty Karna, delighting in battle, there did all that Partha had done before, and O Bharata, Duryodhana with his brothers thereupon, embraced Karna in joy, and then addressed him, saying, Welcome, O mighty armed warrior, I have obtained thee by good fortune. O polite one, leave thou as thou please and command, myself and the kingdom of the Kurus. Karna replied, when thou hast said it, I regard it as already accomplished. I only long for thy friendship, and, O oh Lord, my wish is even for a single combat with Arjuna. Duryodhana said, Do thou with me enjoy the good things of life. Be thou the benefactor of thy friend, and O repressor of enemies. Place thou thy feet on the heads of all foes. Vaisampayana continued, Arjuna, after this deeming himself disgraced, said on to Karna, stationed amidst the brothers like on to a cliff, that path which the unwelcome intruder and the uninvited talker cometh to shall be thine, O Karna, for thou shalt be slain by me, Karna replied, this arena is meant for all not for thee alone, O Palguna. They are kings who are superior in energy, and verily the Kshatriya regard might and might alone. What need of altercation which is the exercise of the weak? O Bharata, speak then in arrows, until with arrows I strike off thy head today before the preceptor himself. Vaisampayana continued, hastily embraced by his brothers, Partha then, that subduer of hostile cities, with the permission of Drona, advanced for the combat. On the other side, Karna, having been embraced by Duryodhana, with his brothers taking up his bow and arrows, stood ready for the fight. Then the firmament became enveloped in clouds emitting flashes of lightning, and the colored bow of Indra appeared shedding its effulgent rays, and the clouds seemed to laugh in consequence of rows of white cranes that were then on the wing. 
and seeing Indra thus viewing the arena from affection for his son, the sun too dispersed the clouds from over his own offspring, and the Palguna remained deep hid under cover of the clouds, while Karna remained visible, being surrounded by the rays of the sun, and the son of the Ritarashtra stood by Karna and Bharadvaja and Kripa, and Bhishma remained with Partha, and the assembly was divided, as also the female spectators, and knowing the state of things, Kunti, the daughter of Boja, swooned away, and by the help of female attendants, Vidura, versed in the lore of all duties, revived the insensible Kunti by sprinkling sandal paste and water on her person. On being restored to consciousness, Kunti, seeing her two sons clad in mail, was seized with fear, but she could do nothing to protect them, and beholding both the warriors with bows strung in their hands, the son of Saradvat, Viz Kripa, knowing all duties and cognizant of the rules, regulating duels, addressed Karna, saying, This Pandava, who is the youngest son of Kunti, belonged to the Kauravas race. He will engage in combat with thee. But, O mighty armed one, thou too must tell us thy lineage and the names of thy father and mother and the royal line of which thou art the ornament. Learning all this, Artha will fight with thee or not, as we will think fit. Sons of kings never fight with men of inglorious lineage. Vaisampayana continued, thus addressed by Kripa, Karna's countenance became like unto a lotus pale and torn with the pelting showers in the rainy season. Duryodhana said, O preceptor, verily the scriptures have it that three classes of person can lay claim to royalty, with persons of the blood royal, heroes, and lastly those that lead armies. If Palguna is unwilling to fight with one who is not a king, I will install Karna as king of Anga, Vaisampayana said, at that very moment, seated on a golden seat, with parched paddy and with flowers and water pots and much gold, the mighty warrior Karna was installed king by Brahmanas versed in mantras, and the royal umbrella was held over his head while yak tails waved around that reducted the hero of graceful mien, and the cheers having seized, King Karna said on to the Kaurava Duryodhana, O tiger among monarchs, what shall I give on to thee that may compare with thy gift of a kingdom? O king, I will do all thou biddest. And Suyodhana said on to him, I eagerly wish for thy friendship. Thus spoken to Karna, replied, Be it so, and they embraced each other's in joy, and experienced great happiness. Thus ends the 138th section in the Sambhava Parva of the Hadi Parva.